Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us here. A um, couple minutes late on the start, getting some technical difficulties squared away, but we are ready to go. Uh, we are very excited to have everybody on board here. We're going to be talking with our friends at Lincoln Financial. Uh, we've got Craig Daly, who's the sales vice president, as well as Scott Harmoning, who's a senior internal wholesaler. I've known and worked with these guys for many, many years, great partners of ours. We're excited to highlight a little bit about what they have going on. Um, before we do that, we're going to cover a couple of things. Um, as you guys are probably familiar with, if you've worked with IMS, we're going to go through a couple of our um, promotions, highlights, things about our company. We do have a handful of new folks on here, so we want to make sure they're aware of all the great things we provide. So let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, we are going to talk about the new producer builders. So if you are an agent that is new to IMS or considering working with IMS, we've got a lot of really great incentives here um, and ways that we partner with you to help you grow your business. Um, depending on certain levels you hit, we have different marketing packages and things that we make available, which you can see here, um, the $100,000 level or 10000 of target premium. We'll get you things like either a 1,500-piece mailing, uh, the newest iPad, $750 of cash, or some uh, pre-formatted emails, marketing analysis, et cetera. You can see if we get up to the 250000 level, we can jump that up to a 3,000-piece mailer, $2,000 marketing, re uh, marketing reimbursement, uh, newspaper ads, collateral, et cetera. Jumping up to the half a million or 50,000 of target premium level. Now we're talking a 5,000 piece mailer, uh, a Dave Pimper seminar mailer uh, focused around social security, which gets great results, um, bill billboard ads, seminars, et cetera, uh, or uh, a couple of days at the Ritz Carlton. Hit the 750 level, we're talking about retirement boss radio, so eight recorded shows, um, digital annuity leads social security seminars, social media campaigns, et cetera. And then up to the million dollar level, of course, we're talking about preset annuity appointments, um, videos, consumer facing brochures, et cetera. Uh, so a lot of incentives to work with us here and very attainable levels to hit to be able to get those new producer builders. Uh, we also want to talk about the business builders, ways that you as valued partners of ours can increase your capital. And we have a referred producer program. So you refer a writing agent to us, we'll give you 50 bucks once they get licensed. Once they place their first piece of business, we'll pay you an additional $100. And then there's thousands of additional dollars you can make as they write additional business. As you can see, we pay out quarterly on those referral, uh, referral bonuses. Um, we do also offer a really strong marketing reimbursement. So as you can see, $100,000 of FIA premium gets you $100. If you are right in single premium life, that same $100,000 gets you 200 bucks in your marketing account. Uh, or if you hit $10,000 of the target premium on the life side, which is what we like to focus on here, uh, we'll get you $200 in your marketing account. Um, we say this a lot, but it is absolutely true. Um, we have the best back office support in the industry. That's something that IMS has hung their hat on for 35 years, um, and that is never going to change. Uh, you do hear a lot of our competitors talk about the great service and things they offer, but when you actually start working with them, you find that, that very few live up to their promises. Um, we are different in that regard. So we help you to work smarter, not harder. You can see the list of support we've got here with the different business uh, building tools and, and resources. Of course, we can help with case design. That's everything from your basic cases all the way up to the advanced market side. Uh, website is very user friendly with all the forums and e-apps that you could possibly need. Of course, you have the top sales expertise and coaching from the sales directors here at IMS, as well as the ability to do paperless contracting. Um, tying into that a little bit, we do use Firelight. Now, this is going to be focused a little bit more on the annuity applications. Uh, for many of the life insurance applications, we're going to use iPipeline, which is also available through our website. But we do use Firelight on the annuity side kind of give you a list of carriers that we have available through the Firelight system currently, as, as well as the carriers that are coming soon. And then again, remember iPipeline for most of the uh, life insurance applications also found on the IMS website. 
I do want to also hit on the creative marketing solutions. We've got a really, really talented creative team here um, that help our advisors in a multitude of ways. So we can help with turnkey solutions. So ready to print customized information, ready to go. Just need to get a you know logo on there. Um, on your letterhead, it's professionally written. We have handouts, flyers, postcards, newsletters, et cetera. Um, if you are an agency or building an agency, we can certainly help with that as well. We can help with that initial logo design, the design of the basics like your business cards and brochures and stationery and advertising as well. And then, of course, in our world today, um, digital marketing prospecting is huge, and we are very strong in the digital marketplace as well. So we can either help create or revamp your personal website or your business website, rather. Uh, we can help with social media, consulting, email marketing, online newsletters, et cetera. So again, really well versed in that, which, which we all need to be at this point. I kind of mentioned a little bit of this before. Uh, the website we have is very robust. We have a lot of great tools on there, including a sales resource library. Uh, guys, we have a lot of agents that log onto our website every day and do not use the sales resource library. There are hundreds of client presentations, concept pieces, life insurance underwriting insights, et cetera. So I encourage you to check that out along with the other tools that, that we've talked about already with the uh, online quote engines and e-apps, et cetera. We do also offer the Retirement Analyzer program. Uh, I know many of you are familiar with this. For those of you are who are not familiar, this is a really great uh, software platform. And what it does is it takes your client's retirement plan out of their head and puts it to the test. Most of us have an idea where we're going to be in retirement or where we think we're going to be, but very few of us has actually stress tested uh, our investments and things like that to make sure we're going to be where we need to be. And this, this software does a great job of that. And then, of course, your sales directors here can help you fill in the solutions um, to help get your clients on pace where they need to be in retirement. So certainly take advantage of that software platform. I um, also want to make sure that everybody is aware that we do have a wealth management division here. Um, so if you are uh, have your Series 65 and you're working in that area, uh, manage money, definitely talk to the Himes Wealth Management team. Obviously, you know, working in that area can increase your red, uh, revenue by getting those man uh, managed money fees every year. Um, helps include, uh, improve rather your client retention. Obviously, you don't have clients going down the street to uh, look at their investments and coming to you for insurance. And then obviously that strengthens the client relationship as well. So I want to make sure that you guys take advantage of that. If you have questions on the wealth management side, please call in and talk to the guys. They're very knowledgeable and they do a great job. I do also, of course, want to hit on a couple of big things coming down. The, the biggest is the top producer summit that we have. You can see it's a Mediterranean cruise. This is probably one of the best uh, incentive trips I've ever seen, uh, being in the business for about 18 years here. So you can see we're going to kick off in Rome, and we will end up in Venice. Um, so again, 4.5 million points to qualify on that. Uh, that's dollar for dollar qualification on the annuity side. They do have a bit of a calculation there for the life side that we can talk about as well. Uh, but all of that production does count. Uh, but this one, uh, plug your ears, guys. This one's focused a little more on a theme. They're more on the annuity side. So I want to make sure everybody sees that. Uh, this is their trip to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, I've been there a few times. It's a beautiful place. If you play golf, uh, you definitely want to get down there. That is a $2 million index annuity qualification to, to get there. Qualification period was April 1st through December 31st of this, of this year. So make sure to keep that in your mind as well. The other thing that I want to hit on quickly, guys, we have Life and Annuity Academies back up and running. So we've been forced to get away from these for a year and a half or so, just like everybody else, but we are back up and running on the Life and Annuity Academies. We're doing two-day producer trainings. Uh, as you can see, we're going to get sales ideas and strategies from top producers. We're going to talk about uh, indexed annuities, life insurance, li uh, large case marketing, business concepts, etc. Um, we have a section on our website focused on this. You guys jump on there, 
look at the upcoming dates that we have and get your names in the hat. Uh, we do have a lot of people wanting to come to these, and so we are going to have to kind of spread them out over a few different events. But if you're interested, get your name in the hat. That's the best thing I can tell you. Obviously, uh, follow us on the socials as well, guys. We have a Facebook page and a LinkedIn page at IMS, so make sure that you are uh, you know, following us there. We put out a lot of good information and update those things daily. And then if you do have any questions about anything that we cover today or just in general, call us. The number here is 800-255-5055, and we are absolutely happy to help. Uh, with any of your needs on the fixed and indexed life insurance and annuity side. Um, so with that being said, we've got through the IMS commercial. I want to welcome again Craig Daly and Scott Harmoning from Lincoln. Uh, I am going to change the presenter over to you, Craig, here so that you are able to um, take over and we'll be excited to go through your presentation. So take it away, guys. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jess. I appreciate it. So let me get here. All right, can everybody see that? Jess, can you see that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Scott and I have worked with Jess and Curtis for, for years, and we appreciate the opportunity to be on here. Just a little bit of background about us. We both, I, I know this is unusual being um, a wholesaler in this business, but I've been at Lincoln 20 years, and Scott's been there um, you know, 15 plus years. So. We've been at Lincoln for 35 plus years, so we've seen a lot of different things. And a couple of things I wanted to hit on real quick. So we're gonna talk about a few underwriting changes that are positive, and then also a quick sales idea, and then follow up with some product information. So if you guys um, can see these changes, I'm gonna go through these pretty quick, but Lincoln, like a lot of our peer companies, went through uh, some temporary COVID underwriting changes back when, when this pandemic started back in March or April of 2020. So if you look at those bullet points, we had a table reduction program, which was very well thought of. We had to, we had to tempor temporarily suspend that. We also made some changes to internal retention and some older age underwriting changes. And the good news is all the, all the news that we're gonna share with you today is positive. So on the underwriting side, we do have the table shape program back. So that's a huge bonus for us. So anybody up to age 70, um, up to 10 million immediately on any permanent product goes from a table C as in Charlie to standard. So that's only on permanent products, but that's a huge deal because I think we're one of only maybe one or two carriers that still has a true table, table reduction or table shape program. So that's huge. We, we brought that back as of uh, late May. We've also in increased our internal retention limits back up to 20 million, up to certain ages. And the other thing that's nice is we were only taking standard uh, 70 to 80, and now we're up to table four. So those are all positives. We've also made some changes on flat extras that you can see and, and substandard flat extras. The next uh, deal that I wanna talk about is some of the restrictions that are still in place. So all ages rated table five and higher would be a postponed. Anyone from ages 81 to 85 would be a postponed. And then some with flat extras, as you can see on those bullet points. And we can share these with Jess and he can share it with the group, but we still do have a few of the temporary COVID restrictions in place. But I think if you look at us compared to many of our peer companies, we have liberalized those guidelines more so than, than our peer group of companies. So we're excited about that. I'll be completely honest, and anybody that talks to me will know this. You know, I understand Lincoln pays my salary, but we always want to be completely candid and honest. The last year or so, with some of the IUL challenges we had and some of the temporary COVID restrictions, it was a tough, tough market for us. But as of May, with some of the changes that we're going to talk about on the IUL front and then the temporary COVID restrictions, many of them being lifted, uh, we're back in the game big time. And, and we're you know very busy and accepting business and we're hungry for business. So I just wanted to make that point before we kind of talk about this quick sales idea. And uh, before I go to the next slide, I wanted to hit on the fact, I know everybody's been talking about tax rate increases and what's going on in Washington, DC and 
Are we going to get rid of a step up in basis? Are we going to have an estate tax that goes back to three and a half million per person? You know, who's going to be affected? I know that, um, you know, politicians have said it's not going to affect anybody 400,000 or above. Um, you know, that's highly dubious, in my opinion, with all the spending that's going on. So these are all going to be apolitical comments, but I think it's going to be good for what we do as an industry, which is planning and trying to mitigate tax concerns for certain clients. And you don't have to have an estate tax problem to look at life insurance from a tax planning perspective. So I wanted to talk about, um, we'll get into the product side a little bit later, but Actually, Scott, are you on for a sec? Can you? Um... Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to, uh, let me see here where the tax control triangle is, but why don't you pick up the slack while I'm uh, going through the slides here? Absolutely, and I apologize. Um, so, Craig, are you finding it? I apologize. I'm not sure. Why don't you just cover in a, at a high level the the IUL changes that we made, and then I'll I'll get back with that. Absolutely. Time. So as Craig was uh, saying, we recently updated our IUL products in May. We did a couple of things. Uh, first thing we did was we did add additional uh, allocation accounts from the Fidelity AIM portfolio. And these are these are accounts. From Fidelity, which are uh, well known, excuse me, Fidelity being a well known uh, carrier, has partnered with Lincoln Financial to offer those in addition to our SP 500. We've also revamped our charges and our fees and lowered them in our uh, IUL products. And this has really allowed us to become a leader in the accumulation distribution type of marketplace, as well as the protection marketplace for the IUL products. And finally, we did update all of our IUL products, and we do have two, to the um, new 7702 guidelines that are available. So if you're looking for somebody to maximum fund and get distributions out, our products are absolutely phenomenal at that for a number of reasons. Not just the product changes which did bring us to the top, but then with the 7702, which allows more money to be put into a life insurance product, we're really top of tier. And Craig, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I did, and I apologize for that. So I, I, I'm going to go through the product a little bit first, and then we're going to talk about the idea at the end. But to Scott's point, we were – the good news about what Lincoln has done is we've really simplified the product. So you're looking at a ladder there that shows you where the old product was – that we updated in March of 2020. And if you look at the new product, we've obviously, we've obviously come up quite a bit. And, and some of that is we, we made some positive changes with 7702, which is the, the changes that Congress made that allowed you to put more cash into a life insurance contract without making it a MAC. So we passed on a lot of that value to the consumer. Um, the nice thing about what we're doing is brand is a huge part of what we do as, as a group. I know it's a huge part of what you do as advisors. Everybody's heard of Lincoln, and who we've partnered with on our IUL product is Fidelity. And one of the benefits to having a proprietary account is the costs are less than doing a hedge on an S&P 500. So um, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on the IUL product front. But if you think about it, we're able to cut down our costs by providing a couple proprietary indexes in our IUL product. One of them is a Fidelity fixed bonus account, and the other one is a high participation account. And both of those are tied to the AIM Fidelity index, dividend index account, which already kind of smooths out volatility. But if you look at the numbers on this um, on this heat map here, our numbers have gotten quite a bit better. And the, and the other thing that I really like, not only are the numbers better and the illustrations are more competitive, but we have that Fidelity co-branding with our product. And it's also much simpler. So gone are the, we've only got one multiplier account that has an asset base charge, but the other accounts in the Wealth Accumulate product, the other five accounts do not have asset base charges and do not have a variable multiplier. So the two Fidelity accounts, 
we, I, what I like to explain to people is when you show them an illustration, what's the hurdle rate? What do you have to get to actually sh get the 5.7 that we're illustrating here? And like every advisor, they want a high probability of hitting that rate of return that they're showing. So if you look at that 5.7, we have a 165% multiplier on our high participation account. So if the index gets 3.59, if you multiply that by 165, you get 5.7. So the hurdle rate or all the client has to get to show that 5.7, which is, which is the maximum illustrated rate, is 3.59 on the actual index. And the reason that's important is if you think about it, clients have a very fixed rate of return in their head. When they're thinking about it, they're thinking of, oh, I can get 4% off my retirement accounts and that's what I can live off of. So when you show them an illustration at 5.7, they look at it and they say, well, that might be a little bit aggressive. Um, and by putting that hurdle rate in there and talking about the 165% participation rate, you're giving the client an added level of comfort by saying you really only have to get 3.59 in the underlying index. So as we go to the next page, this kind of shows you the heat map that we were talking about where Lincoln stacks up on 10 pays, on uh, pay to retirement, on five pays, and we're in a much better competitive position than we were before. Same thing at, at uh, um, max distribution amount. So if you look at it, I'm going to get to, because I know we have a limited amount of time and we want to have questions at the end. But if you look at it, we also have a fixed bonus account, which is in tandem with the high participation account. So the high participation account has 165% multiplier, or excuse me, participation rate. The fixed bonus is nice because it's basically a 1% floor. You have a 0% floor in the product, but you're always gonna get a 1% crediting rate at the end. So if the index does negative, let's say the market does, or let's say the, the Fidelity dividend index does negative, you would get zero, and then you would get that 100 basis point fixed bonus on top of it. So that's nice, it's similar to what Lincoln used to offer, which is to have a 1% floor. The Fidelity fixed bonus account gives you a 1% floor. So the way I look at it is the high participation account uh, that we use with the Fidelity index might be for somebody that really wants to try and hit a home run and the fixed bonus hedges your risk on the downside a little bit more. But the great thing is the, the high participation account does not have an asset-based charge, so it's a true 0% floor and the fixed bonus account does not have an asset-based charge, so it's a true 1% floor, which is very, very um, competitive in the industry. So, so we're gonna look at a case here. We talked about taxes before, and uh, the big thing for people is they're looking at it and saying, what if you have somebody that's maxed out on their qualified account and they really want to, you know, add some additional retirement income that's in a tax advantaged account? And, and this is what we talk about a lot is if you have a million dollars in your qualified account and you're in a 25 or 30 percent tax bracket, that really is a $750,000 or $700,000 asset. And I always like to talk about if anybody can remember the ING commercials that everybody's walking around with their number. So the guy's cutting his hedges and he's got a million two, that his neighbor's got a million six. And, and as an industry and as a, you know, just the American public in general, all we talk about is let's cram as much money as we can away in retirement without any really thought or process. We just want to have all this money in retirement when in reality, what do we care about? We don't care about what that number is in retirement. We care about what it generates in income. And, and what really is important is what it generates in after-tax income. So if you look at it and you have all your eggs in the qualified basket, and I was having this conversation with my boss who's been at Lincoln for years and actually has most of his, and he's probably getting ready to retire in a couple of years, and all of his assets are in a qualified account. I'm not saying qualified accounts are bad, or, or they're not good to, to leverage. I do that, you know, and Scott does that at Lincoln all day long because we have a nice match. But if you have all your eggs in that basket, you're going to have, you know, some exposure to taxes when you retire. So if you're sitting there and you retire and the tax rate is 25%, and then they say, well, you know, we need to pay for all of the spending that we've done over the last several years, we're going to raise your tax rate to 28%. That makes a meaningful difference on your retirement income. And what happens is you either have to take less in retirement income 
or you have to take a greater percentage of your assets out. So that's a, that's a huge deal. So what we're showing here is Carl, who's uh, age 50, and he's putting $15,000 a year into the Fidelity dividend bonus account. And if you look at it, he's going to start he's going to start taking loans out when he retires at age 66 for 20 years. So if we go to the Wealth Accumulate 2, this kind of shows you this is a really great summary page and I'm going to have Scott kind of go through this real quick. Scott, if you want to take a look at that and kind of summarize how Lincoln has really cleaned up our illustration uh to the better. I'd love that. Absolutely. Absolutely, Craig. This solutions page is towards the front, I think it's like page three or so of the actual illustration that you'll be able to show your client. And what done, we've done here is we have put in everything that has that basically is, is part of the illustration into one really, really nice summary, as Craig was saying. Your premium, your riders, your death, the death benefit, even distributions um, are all in one place. And Craig, if you go to the next slide real quick. I want to zoom yep. in on the distributions. Oh, we'll get there. There we go. If you notice, we've added a range of distributions report right to the summary page. So you may illustrate at 5.7 as most people, and it shows the distribution. But we put in here all the rates from one up to the, the illustrated rate. And what that would be, as Craig mentioned before, if you're in the uh, Fidelity bonus account with that 1% um, basically as a floor right now, uh, you still get distributions. And how many people can say a 1% policy can still generate distributions? What a fantastic story to be able to talk to that client who's really worried about slow growth over the years is to show this, this part right here. So I really love that range of distributions report. We have advisors who sell off of this page more than the rest of the illustration. Uh, and, and absolutely love it because it does put everything right at your fingertips and has a nice narrative to it. Yeah, and the one thing I'd point out too is if you look at that, I, I flipped back to the page before and it shows $15,000 premium for 15 years. So, um, you know, you put that in for 15 years and then you can pull income out at 27804 for 20 years. And the great thing about that is, it, it, and, and if you remember one thing I say today, please remember the fact that I say it's non-reportable income. Because whenever you say non-reportable income, your clients are going to look at you like, that's intriguing. What, what do you mean by non-reportable income? And what it means is it's nice because it doesn't affect your Medicare or your Social Security benefits. It's basically tax-free. It would work functionally like an IRA, Roth IRA, where you have no income limitations and you have no taxes if you if you structure it properly. So it's a really great story. It's a way to diversify or effectively blend your retirement tax rate down. That's another you know kind of thing that I talk about when you're saying, are you interested in blending your effective retirement tax rate down? People look at you and they say, well, how do I do that? And it's basically by diversifying your assets, right? If you had we go back to our example. If you had a million dollars in your qualified account, you're going to pay whatever your effective income tax rate is, and you're going to pay that. And if rates go up, you're going to pay a higher rate, and you're going to have to take more out. If you have life insurance, it effectively blends your tax rate down because if you have a certain amount um, in a non non taxable bucket, uh, you're going to your your effective tax rate goes from 25 percent. Let's say you have 20 percent of your assets. In a life insurance program, your effective tax rate is going to go down roughly five points because you're taking 20% of your income out of an asset that has no tax. So it's a very strong story. It's a great way to talk about life insurance. You don't have to have an estate tax problem to utilize this program. You just have to have someone that has a good income that is looking to diversify their, their income. And I talk to people all the time who are in that 30 to 40 to 50 range and no one, and I mean no one that I talk to, especially with everything we've gone through the last 18 months, thinks their effective tax rate is going to be lower than it is uh, today. So, um, you know, we just like to point this out. We think it's a great story. Um, you know, the, the other nice thing is the product itself we were talking about earlier. You have a true floor. So the whole smooth sailing concept the other topic that people love to talk about when they're retiring is, what if I retire and I have accumulated a lot of assets and then my assets 
the market goes down 20% in that first year. It makes it very, very difficult to catch up when your assets go down 10, 20% or the market corrects the first year or year in retirement. So another way that people utilize these, these type of programs is they'll take money out of their, their traditional retirement accounts. And then when they have a down year in the market, They'll take money out of their, their life insurance contract and not take money out of their retirement accounts and let them recover for a year. Um, it just allows you to, to, to have your assets last throughout lifetime. It's just another effective strategy. It gives you flexibility. It prepares you to have you know, choices when you retire. It's not just, I've got to take this amount out of this taxable account. So um, the nice thing about these new product updates too is they're simpler than the old versions before the, the IUL reg changes that we had. And the other thing is, is with co-branding, with Fidelity, everybody's heard of Lincoln, everybody's heard of Fidelity. One in four retirement accounts are either directly managed by Fidelity or managed by Fidelity um, through a third party. So I just think we have a really strong story to, to tell on this. And I think as an industry, I, I'm personally optimistic and I think we're going to have a renaissance um, because I think that the people still want to mitigate their taxes, Republican, Democrat, independent, everybody wants to figure out a way to, to maximize their after-tax income. And these products are a great way to do that. You don't have an income limit like you'd have with the Roth IRA. You have non-reportable income. And the additional thing that you have on top of the potential to get uh, retirement income tax-free is you have the life insurance component because we're not just here to uh, you know to dodge taxes. We're here to provide advantages from a tax perspective, but also uh, provide for your family if you have something. I mean, I always use the example of the dentist we had that was 45 years old. He had no insurance. He had a, a stay-at-home spouse, and he had three kids um, that were under the age of six. And so he was looking for some retirement income, but he also needed the life insurance component too, which there was a significant need there. So these are great ways to, 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 to you know, basically cover multiple risk patterns, uh, you know, a mortality risk pa pattern, a tax uh, risk pattern. So I think that it's a good story and, it's, and, it, and it solves multiple issues. So the one thing is I got a little ahead of myself with this, uh, with this PowerPoint, and I apologize, but this kind of walks you through, you know, what you're looking at. And the Fidelity accounts are the ones that I would lean on heavily. If you look at what that's what I was talking about, the high participation account, 165%, and then the fixed bonus, 125%, but you get the 1% bonus at the end of the index segment, which is basically a 1% floor. And then you have four of the other accounts that we've had as well. The multiplier account does have an asset-based charge. Um, the performance trigger account is basically you get, if the market's positive at all, you get six and a half percent. And if it's negative, um, you get zero percent. So that's an interesting account. But where I think we're going to have the most traction is on those two bottom accounts. And like I said before, the reason you're going to see life insurance carriers partner with these proprietary funds Lincoln is obviously uh, partnering with Fidelity is because it cuts down on the hedging costs when you're buying options to hedge these products and it makes it more attractive and it passes on more of the consumer value to, uh, to the customer. So I, I anticipate the two Fidelity accounts at the bottom being utilized probably 80% of the time. And we did talk about this a little bit. We talked about one in four uh, retirement accounts being managed by Fidelity. Everybody's heard of Fidelity. Almost everybody, if not everybody's heard of Lincoln. So that, that's usually a very, very high on the trust factor, especially when you're talking about some of these index products, because I know there's been a lot of changes to, on that front. And the only other comment I would make, and then I'll open it up for questions and, and see if Jess has any questions is, Lincoln is also a diversified company in terms of our life insurance sales. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but I think it's an advantage for us if everything else is equal. Lincoln has only about 15% of our sales are in the index account bucket. We have a diversified mix of products. So we sell a lot of money guard. We sell variable. We sell a lot of term. 
we sell GUL, and we sell IUL. And so I think we're going to be, we're not immune from a low interest rate environment, but I think we'll be a little less volatile than, volatile than our peer companies um, of companies that are selling, you know, a lot in one particular product sells. So I think that that's a selling point for us as well. So Jess, I know I kind of went on a filibuster there a little bit. So um, did you have any questions or do we want to open it up to the group? Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's open it up to the group. Um, I've had a couple um, pop through just kind of while we're going through. So I'll just go ahead and ask those, but if you guys have other questions, go ahead and, and throw them in there and I'll ask them as they come through. Um, one agent had asked about what your chronic illness benefit options are, rider options are on the new product. Yeah, we are going to be refreshing. We we have the, what's called the CCABR on the IUL products, which is an, a, an LTC rider. We are going to be, when we refresh the products, we're going to be adding um, the new LTC rider. So that's going to be, uh, you know, we're continuing to make that rider better. Um, we also have an LAABR, which is kind of a no-cost, still separately underwritten rider. It gives you a discounted benefit when you accelerate it. Um, it doesn't cost anything up front. And then the CCABR is more of the, it costs you about 9% up front, and it provides uh, more, uh, more generous uh, benefits on the CCABR. But the LTC rider is going to be an improvement over the CCABR. We're going to be adding that probably. Um, Later this year, or early next. Scott, do you know what? Do you have a time frame on the LTC rider being added to the IUL? Uh, no, I, I do not at this time. I, I've heard the same thing you have. Yeah. The nice thing with the LTC rider is you're going to have that money guard back office. So anybody that sold a money guard policy, you're going to have all of the concierge level care, all of the care coordination. Um, you know, when that when when we get that updated on the product. And the, new, the nice thing about the new uh, rider that's going to be added later on is there's going to be a zero-day elimination period as well. So it's going to be a big improvement over the CCABR, which is what we have currently on the IUL products. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I do have a couple of questions coming through. Um, we're seeing some of the newer IUL products with the 7702 calculation run very competitively or, or at least illustrating very competitively on a level death benefit versus increasing mm -hmm. which is kind of the traditional design um, have you guys done any uh, comparisons that way how much of a reduction are you seeing in income things like that if you were to use level versus increasing yeah. Jess I'll take that one and absolutely we're seeing the same thing with our new product that level used to not even really be in play and now it is I don't have a competitive like it's this percentage but it is definitely very competitive with Lincoln's product as well. Uh, you will get more with the minimum face increasing. That's why they put it in the PowerPoint, but I've seen the exact same thing with our product. Sorry, I don't have any comparisons. I, I haven't done that, but uh, level is a slight reduction in distributions, but it's a, it's a very compelling sell where, uh, sell, sale, excuse me, Whereas last year before the 7702 updates, it just wasn't. So I'm seeing the same thing and we are running those. Okay. Um, I've got another question here. Some folks are noticing um, some of the carriers out there are offering an accumulation focused IUL, but then also kind of a protection focused IUL separate product. Yep. Um, asking, yep. asking where Lincoln stands on that as well. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take that one. Um, we, we went through, the PowerPoint went through the Wealth Accumulate, which is the, more the accumulation-based product. But we also, um, we also have a Wealth Preserve IUL product that's very, very competitive. It's got a 40-year no lapse or age 90, whichever comes first. So if you're 55, it would go to 90. If you're 45, it would go to 85. Um, it's, it's a very competitive product. Um, the nice thing is, is we mirrored the accounts to where they almost match the accumulation product. We do not have the multiplier account in um, the preserve account, but we have the other five accounts in the wealth preserve account. The only slight difference is on the fixed bonus, instead of 100 basis points on the wealth accumulate, it's 95 on the wealth preserve. But yeah, I'm glad somebody brought that up because we do have a very competitive uh, protection product that's called wealth preserve. And it's very, the, the index accounts mirror closely 
the wealth accumulating uh, product, which is nice because you don't have to be, um, you don't have all these esoteric accounts that you have to try and keep track of. Okay. And so one one other thing that I'll throw out, guys, just in my experience with Lincoln, and, and many of you may know these things, many of you may not. Um, uh, Craig mentioned earlier the table shave program. That is extremely unique. Um, that used to be something that more carriers offered, and really you, you've got a couple at this point that offer it. So keep that in mind. That's standard to table three, I believe. Is that accurate? Yep. Up, up so, to age 70 on permanent products. Yep. Okay. So keep that in mind for those folks, uh, well-controlled type 2 diabetics maybe slightly overweight, things of that nature, they're a good fit there. Um, one other thing that I would tack on to just as a reminder, guys, and, and if this has changed, Craig and Scott, let me know, but um, chewing tobacco. We can get yep. down tobacco rates with Lincoln. Um, almost all carriers out there are going to consider any type of tobacco a tobacco user rate. Uh, if we're using chewing tobacco, cigars, pipe tobacco, as long as it's not cigarettes or vapes, it's my understanding we can get non-tobacco rates with Lincoln. Is that correct? Yeah, and the the one thing I would be clear about on the on the chewing tobacco because we run into this sometime, and I think we might have run into this with you on a case, Jess. Um, if you do the chewing tobacco, you've got to admit to it up front because if you have a positive test and you haven't admitted to it, obviously it's going to be um, it's going to be problematic. So, but to your point, marijuana um, pipe users. Um, uh, cigar users, I think it's uh, one a month or less. You could potentially be preferred or preferred plus. Two per month, you could be preferred. Um, you could be standard even with a positive test, but you have to admit to cigar usage or chewing up front. Isn't that right, Scott? On the pipe, you, you still, if you had a positive test, if you admit to it up front, yeah. you would uh, you would still be you would be standard non-tobacco on that front. That, that's that's correct, Craig. Now, with the one or two uh, cigars a month, you must have a negative nicotine. So just keep yeah. that in mind. But you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. So that I appreciate you bringing that up, Jess. And marijuana users too. I mean, we. I know uh, Scott and I cover Colorado, so this comes up a lot. But um, marijuana users will will look at you. Basically, anybody that's using it two to three times a week or less is kind of a drop dead, but if you're using it, you know, once a month or once every couple of weeks, you know, you could potentially get um, even preferred non-smoker. Okay, that's good. That's good information to know as well. That comes up a lot more uh, than it used to, so that's great. Okay, guys. Well, I'm gonna. I've got a couple poll questions I want to throw up here real quick for the attendees. I do want to thank um, Scott and Craig for joining us here. A lot of great information. Um, I'm going to throw up a poll question or two. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind answering those for us real quick. Um, like more information on Lincoln's IUL product, please make sure and indicate that. That's how we know to get that information out to you. I'll leave this open for just another few seconds here. Got a few coming in still. All right, so we'll close this. Uh, next question here. You'd be interested in licensing with IMS uh, for Lincoln Financial. They've got really great competitive term UL and IUL products out there as well, of course, as the Money Guard, which is one of the um, the kind of the original asset-based LTC options that's been out there way in front of lots of the other carriers. So if you're interested in getting appointed with Lincoln, please go ahead and, and indicate so on the poll. All right, we'll close that one here. And one last poll question. As I mentioned, we are starting up our academies again. So if you are interested in attending one of our upcoming academies, we'd sure like you to let us know here. And we have two scheduled for the balance of this year. Both will be in the fall. We will be scheduling for early next year as well before long. So please make sure to indicate if you're interested in attending one of these events.
Okay. All right, everybody. Well, again, I would like to say thank you to Craig and Scott for joining us here. Very informative information. Um, good to get updated on Lincoln. Um, we look forward to doing a lot more with them as the year goes on. And I'd like to thank all of the advisors who jumped on today. If you have any questions or would like to talk further about this, please feel free to give any of your sales directors a call at 800-255-5055. Thank you all again for attending, and we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Jeff. Bye-bye.